being a woman is about being a whole package. You have to be a fairy and you have to be fair. You have to be courageous and you have to be vulnerable. Because a lot of times in society, women get to play different roles. science, technology, engineering, uh, engineering and maths. Uh, these are some of the most demanded subjects in the computer era. Because they fuel so much of industry, but that doesn't mean that the other industries are not thriving. The question is, this area has now become a choice, at least in the academic world for women. But as young mothers, if we have daughters and they want to pursue engineering, I think we should now start encouraging them. If we have sisters, we should start supporting them. Because even in the corporate world, which is the world that I know most of uh, with my experience, STEM education, science, technology, engineering and maths is opening up doors. Technology is so universal. It will cover everything. I think even fashion, you know, in terms of technology, it covers that as well. So, yes, education is important, but there are worlds out there where we can kind of thrive and blossom even without formal education, provided we have grit, determination, and courage. And that brings me to you, Shania. You come from the industry, which is from the outside very glamorous. It looks very structured, it looks very organized, at least in the 21st century. But I still feel that there is a huge amount of gender bias even in that industry. And it doesn't only come in terms of what is the salary like, what is the payout structure between men and women, but even other ones, right? Is that industry supportive of women or is that industry violating of women a lot of ways? What has been your view about the industry in general? So, unfortunately, that industry is very young. There's a lot of gender bias, definitely. Male models are paid more. Unless you become a female model who's uh, doing a lot of shows and who's an opening model or the showstopper, or then of course are paid very well, more than the male models. But uh, initially, to start out, it's very difficult. Uh, it's not safe, for sure. Um, that's why the first thing, I was very lucky that I got a break because I had a passion and Logan Bryant company, so I had his hand on my head um, and I signed a contract with the uh, Magna Publications. So my work was much, once you put a patch in it, then it's a different role, it's much easier. Um, but I also signed on with an agency called Matrix in Bombay, uh, which is India's number one agency. Uh, they handle celebrities primarily. They handle Katrina Kaif and Karina Kapoor and Salman Khan and um, Alia Khan and they started the modeling division. So when I joined, they had just started out with the modeling division and they had like a handful of models. So mostly pageant women, uh, you know, Stemnam, Sindhya, Chakana. And I was lucky because I was a pageant winner, I got it. So my work became much easier when I had the force of uh, Reshma Shetty who's grown off Netflix and Salman Khan also has a pro uh, partnership there. So I had their hands on my head, so I was very lucky. But nevertheless, I did have to struggle a lot. I did go for auditions. Um, I actually also got a film called Pyarka Panchnama, part two, uh, directed by somebody called Love Ranjan. I was opposite an actor called Karthik Aryan. He's come up uh, quite a bit now. And um, I had a couple of experiences. I was on board for three months. I did the script reading, the rehearsals, the dance classes, everything. And uh, there were certain scenes in the film that I was not comfortable with and the director kept adding more and more scenes and I kept saying no, no, no and eventually it came to a point where I was extremely uncomfortable and I said I have to back out of the film um, and uh, so I did and, but the director and the producer, the, the team was very young, they were very nice people the producer was very, very sweet. Uh, he tried to explain to me and he said that it's going to be great for your career and don't do this and you know, just... Uh, but uh, somewhere, some, something inside just didn't feel right also about the whole uh, 
atmosphere. I wasn't getting very good vibes in the third month. I don't want to talk about that actually. But uh, so I decided I took a call. I called up my parents. They were in Delhi, and I called them up in the middle of the night. And I told my mom I'm not doing the film. She was very disappointed, but she said no, we support you. Whatever you want to do. So I broke the contract and I quit the film. But that's when I decided that. Um, because even in that film, girls are stereotyped. Again, like like you said, you know, how is it? There is a gender bias. So that's when I decided that I will direct. I will do. I will make the films that I want. No matter how much time it takes. You do do your own things. It's sometimes very important. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of courage to walk away from a movie that has been your dream at one point. Yeah. But I salute you for taking that uh, way, Ashraya, of being courageous and being true to your values. We cannot succeed if our personal values are in conflict with our professional values. I strongly believe that because you know what happens in our industry is of the things that you mentioned in our industry, in the corporate world. There's a whole lot of point of in our time, in our careers, where your integrity is checked. Right. You know, you feel that. You're Integrity is being compromised. You are caught right. You are asked to be tempted to do wrong things. And when your personal value is in conflict with your professional ask, the time to think, pause, and maybe take a course correction is important. I'm glad that you know you took the courage to do. That. So, what was it like to be a woman in STEM education at a time when um, that wasn't the chosen choice for a lot of women? What would you talk about? So I think it's a very relevant question even now. So I, for the education that uh, I have uh, you know, not over these years, I would like to give the entire credit to my parents, especially my father. Uh, my parents were not the type of parents who would say, uh, you know, you should learn cooking and home sciences. Have to go get married and take care of your family. They were never those kind of parents. Uh, they always said, uh, "I used to love math as a subject," so they always encouraged me. They never stopped me taking entrance examinations, and uh, I took entrances, got through, got into engineering. In fact, after I completed my engineering, my parents supported me to go by myself to Bombay. It, at that age of you know. 21 a uh, couple of my friends in myself went to bombay and we got into corporate work we looked for jobs we survived on our own so that time that is the kind of uh, faith that our parents showed us i think i'm really grateful for that uh, stem education is becoming more and more popular among girls but still i feel there are hurdles there are biases uh, Fortunately, in the area of academics, the bias is not much because women very easily choose academics as their career. You know, they feel teaching in school is limit time limited and not so much of pressure as it is there in corporate. So it's not there. But as you grow up uh, in ladder, even in academics, when you get into higher management, there are biases and there are glass ceilings that have to be broken, and you really have to put in a lot of hard work to get where you want to get. Uh, but I said that I think we are getting there. Uh, people are understanding. We also need to sensitize our men. In fact, the boys, our 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 own kids, we need to sensitize sensitize them uh, about the education to women and girls. And uh, you know, rather than competing, they should hold our hands. They should support us in whatever we want. Thank you so much, Rekha. That was a wonderful explanation. But let me then come back to Madhavi and ask you the question, Madhavi, which uh, you know, there are a lot of times in the life of an entrepreneur or a you know pioneer, a new world, where you want to give up. Why should I do it? 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 Why should What then is the fuel that you know that kind of gives you the energy to bring back your force unstoppable? What happens at that time? 
So, you know, I think I would like to say that it's my positivity which has kept me going all through. I, I truly believe in the book called The Secret. And uh, uh, actually the negativity comes more from the people around you who think that they cannot do it, it's not possible, and why you're not getting into it. So, you know, somehow I've always tried not to get impacted by the negativity around. And, uh, you know, I've always tried to be the positive people. And even, you know, whenever I'm able to achieve something which even they thought was impossible, I said it's possible, I'm possible. It's never like you cannot achieve anything. If you have the determination, if you have, you know that, you know, you, you can work hard, there is nothing stopping you. And, um, uh, you know, you should just be ready to face challenges. And at a very fraction of a second on a small thing only, most of the time I've seen is people want to give up. They don't even want to, like, you know, take a chance to do something which you got in offer for. If I, you know, like, if I said no to all the projects that I got, I wouldn't have been where I am today. I had a strong conviction in me that yes, I will do it, I'll make it possible, I'll work hard for it. I, you know, learn, learn, learn the ropes of the business. And that's what I did. I was totally positive. And I think it's very, very important to positive about what you are leading towards and uh, I think the universe inspires. So the universe inspires. I kind of agree with you. The universe inspires. Rika coming to you, you know, um, we heard your story that the five years that you were the most stressed in terms of multitasking and you know getting into working on all the cylinders. I just want to know what is it today that fuels your force? You are at a big position, you are leading and kind of helping your young men and women groom their careers. What is it that keeps you going to What is that adrenaline rush that tells you that yes, I must do more and more and more? Is it about titles? Is it about publications? What is it that fuels that uh, energy? I think uh, when I'm teaching the students in a class, the moment I see uh, they understand what I'm telling them, a smile on their faces, a raised hand. Uh, you know, that gives me the satisfaction. Uh, other than that, when you hear that, you know, the students that you have taught are, are getting selected in such and such company, they're doing so well in life, and they come back to you and pay that respect, I think that is the most satisfying. Uh, and, and I am ambitious. I think I've just started now. There's so much more to do in life. Uh, there are areas open for all of us to, you know, get into and work and show up. Right. So it's about, you know, never giving up. It's about charging your own territory. It is about making your own pathways. And then I must come back to you, Shania, because, you know, you have dealt with hope in the face of hopelessness, literally. You have kind of dealt with courage when you were not required to display that courage. And it, it takes a very unique kind of strength to come out of the dark. So, you know, when I look at you, you like the phoenix. You're coming back from the ashes, so to speak. What is your message? Because, you know, accidents are never planned. Thank you. They happen. And how do we then get out? And this is not just about physical accidents, even medical challenges. A lot of women deal with life threatening ailments, they deal with cancer, they deal with so many other problems, and it requires a unique kind of courage. So if you let me know, if you put a finger on that pulse that said, this is my uh, energy button, what was your energy button at that point in time? I think the first thing that um, really broke me when I came back home and I was in bed, uh, and I couldn't move. Uh, for the first time, I saw my dad cry. And he's a very strong man. He never cries. And that, that's when I made up my mind that I need to be okay. I, I can't see this. I need to become okay. And uh, the second thing, of course, was uh, because I had walked the ramp so much, it was very, uh, and all of a sudden, I, was, I couldn't even move. It was just poles apart and I, I could not bear the thought of not being able to walk again. I think these these two things primarily uh, really uh, pushed me to my limit and I just held on to a vision that uh, like I would visualize myself and then I started uh, when my hands started moving and I was using my phone, I would save images on my phone of models on the ramp 
and I started visualizing myself again that I will walk again. I will walk the ramp again. I will, I will be, I will be totally fine again. And every day, I just held on to that vision like life and death. Like I didn't get, it just would leave my mind. So I just pushed myself. It was very painful in the beginning to um, get out of the wheelchair. It was actually <laughs> there were nights where I would. I used to say the Gayatri Mantra and I used to have just one wish from God. I used to say just take me to the water like this. But I'm very thankful that you didn't listen to me. Yeah, absolutely. So are we that you know, we didn't listen to you. And I'm extremely thankful to your dad breaking down because you know, uh, well, he broke down because his, his daughter was in pain. He broke down because his dad, daughter's dream, dreams were shattered. But sometimes we don't realize that the people whom we love the most, even in their most vulnerable moments, give us the greatest energy. So he gave you that you know, fuel for you to become unstoppable, and we will remain so grateful to him for that. So, and that's that's really the journey of the world.